This is Father Matthew Kozlowski coming to you from St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Stewart, Florida, telling you everything you need to know about Noah's Ark, hopefully in about two minutes. Well, some questions always come up, and they're coming up this week because we are reading the Essential 100 Bible Passages as part of our E100 Bible Challenge at St. Mary's. And today and tomorrow, we are at that classic story of Noah and the Ark and the Flood. First question that always comes up, what is a cubit? It says that uh, God instructed that the ark be 300 cubits long. Well, as it turns out, uh, a cubit is the length of a forearm from the point of the elbow to the tip of the middle finger. And if you have a study Bible, it probably mentions that in the notes. So how long is a cubit? Well, it depends how big your forearm is. But apparently that was a traditional um, measurement in the ancient world, the cubit. How many people were on the ark? Um, well, uh, the traditional answer is eight. Uh, you've got Noah and his wife and Noah's three sons and their wives. And so you've got eight people, uh, quite a lot of work to do. How many animals were on the ark? Well, at one point it says there were two of every kind of animal. And then a couple of verses later, uh, it seems that God says, uh, wait a minute, on second thought, bring some extra clean animals along. Um, of course, the Bible delineates clean animals from unclean animals as part of the dietary laws. And so they bring uh, seven pairs of clean animals. Um, perhaps one of the reasons is that Noah sacrifices some of them uh, as soon as he gets off of the ark. So they wanted to make sure they had some extra clean animals to go along. How to make sense of this whole story of Noah's ark. Um, one way to look at it is to just think about this tension that is clearly on the mind of the authors uh, that put together the, the book of Genesis. This tension of God being grieved by human sin and human destruction, and at the same time, uh, just passionately in love with the creation, including humans. And so there is the judgment, and then at the same time, uh, salvation and care. It's a really striking tension that shows up uh, all through scripture, actually. And you can, you can see it in the pages of this story in particular, and we'll see it as we continue in, in the chapter uh, and, and in, the rest of the, in the rest of the Bible, this tension between uh, God's love and passionate care for humankind, even as God is clearly uh, grieved by sin and, uh, and destruction. That's all for now. This is Father Matthew Kozlowski signing off.